Thank you for listening today on Revealing Wholeness, sponsored by Infinity Whole Health. Check out our website at infinitywholehealth.com, where we are revealing the eternal in each individual, the infinite in the individual. The creativity is made manifest. Limitation is let go. Now, here's your host, Dr. Troy Munson. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson. And this month is June of 2022, and we are doing, an, I guess, kind of an expose on farmer's markets and what to look for, what about them. But this particular podcast is on fun facts and farmer's markets. Now, I'll tell you what, when we start digging into to farmer's markets, I was amazed that there's all this history. It's really, I mean, I guess we should expect that because we can think about what did they do in biblical times? Well, they all went to the market and bought their food because nobody had a fridge. And so they were probably daily sellers. I mean, we would call that kind of a farmer's market, but nowadays we get them like once a week and it depends on what town you're in, what day of the week it is. Uh, I know where, where I live, it happens on Friday and it's for four hours a week. And wouldn't it be nice if it was even every other day? And farmers, that's how they actually made everything because that's what they did. Could you imagine going and saying, hey, when was this picked? And they said two weeks ago. You'd think, well, I'm not going to buy that. But a farmer's market is like it was picked this morning or it was picked yesterday. It's like it's so fresh. It's so good. It's so alive. So from that standpoint, that's kind of why farmer's markets are are just so vitally important, and they've been forever. So one of the oldest farmer's market in the U.S. is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and it has been in operation. Now, I would have guessed actually older than this, but it's been around for 105 years. I would have thought, oh my gosh, at least the mid-1800s. Maybe they they had it since then, but it isn't. About early, early 1900s. It's been around, and so that's got some history. It kind of makes me want to go to Pennsylvania and say, let's go to the farmer's market. And, you know, the the fun thing about that is I remember going to Kauai, and on Kauai, there literally was a farmer's market every day somewhere. And we had this book that told us where to hit them, and we did. We went to them every single day and bought fresh stuff. It was awesome. I thought, this is the way to live and so you could just get kind of just about anything. We we would eat jicama here, and the first time I had fresh jicama over there, oh my goodness, I could not eat it anymore anywhere else because it was so amazing. You you bought into the hic- you bit into the jicama, and it was just this amazing watery, lovely experience. The jicama over here is dry. And and you if you've ever had jicama you're like well it's it's moist it's kind of cool it's chewy it's awesome you, when you have ha- fresh oh my goodness you'll you'll never go back it's it's like all my fruit trees and my fruit in my yard I, I can't hardly eat fruit any other way but from them because I have it so fresh I mean I go out there and I'll pick a handful of blueberries in August and I'll put it on my cereal and it's to die for it's just like so good. When I pick a fresh peach off of my tree, I'm like, there's nothing better. I, I can't not eat store-bought peaches. I just won't do it. Sometimes we'll be at a farmer's market on the the uh, east side of the mountains, we call it, in Washington State. So on the desert side, people don't realize that, that it's like two-thirds or three-quarters of, of Washington State is desert. But anyways, on the, on the east side... It's very warm, and they have really good peaches, and so I'll I'll get them fresh. A lot of apples, if you've ever eaten an apple, you've probably had a Washington State apple because they're all grown on the the east side where it's really warm, and they'll grow all along the um, Columbia River Basin. And so you just see you see growers all along. It's just it's crazy, and you can get some of the best apples. I've gone over there and picked cherries myself, and they are just exquisite. It's like, wow, I just love fresh cherries. So wonderful. So other things, um, markets that are like really old. So even in London, they have, they have a, a farmer's market that literally is as old as the 1200s. 
So 1276 is when they think that it started. And they think it may have been even as early as 1014. So we're talking almost a millennia ago or, or more than a millennia ago that it, it started. But it was probably much earlier than that. But these are the records that they have of these farmers markets. I think that's really, really cool. Kind of makes me want to go to Europe and, and experience in a whole new way. Other fun facts. Now this was a kicker. I had no idea this. So how many how many farmers markets would you think were in our nation, you know, in America? And I was like, oh, gosh, I don't know. Maybe maybe a couple hundred per state. So maybe there might be two or three thousand farmers markets. There's so almost nine thousand farmers markets in the United States. And three out of four farmers do sell to at farmers markets, which is awesome. So do go and buy local. And oftentimes, you know, we're always going for organic or at least the lowest pesticides that we can get. A lot of these farmers meet or exceed organic standards, even though they don't mark their food with that because they don't want to pay all the money just to get an organic stamp that sometimes is completely bogus. So from that standpoint, quiz each each farmer that you go to. When was it picked? What do you do? Tell me about your, your fields. I mean, with pride, they're going to talk about what they do and their love for farming. Who wouldn't want to tell somebody what they do and what they love? I, I, I can't believe you'd want to be a hardworking farmer because you hated it. You're usually going to be a farmer because you love it. And there's something about it that they love. And each one loves to grow something different. And so find what their passion is. Support those people because they're supporting your health because they're growing nutrient-rich food and getting, getting it to you as fresh as they possibly can. I've actually gone to organic growers and they'll produce a box of, of food and we'll go pick it up once a week. I've done that before. It's, it's awesome. And you just learn to try and experience new foods and do that. What's interesting is that You'll have um, these programs. I, I remember reading about a supplemental nutrition assistance program. They call it SNAP. And you can redeem, they redeem more than $20 million in benefits of buying foods from local farmers. And that was in 2016. So there are programs out there that do actually support some of these farmers. And it's awesome. Buy local buy organic and do it and support these people. So if you know any fun facts that, that we did not mention here that you find really interesting, please throw them my way. Please send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm Dr. Troy Munson. The information on Dr. Troy Munson's podcast is meant to educate the listener and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease.